Welcome, welcome everybody to Chess Whiz TV. Today is September 2nd, 2014, all without looking at the calendar or the clock. Today's Funday Monday, as you may know, although it feels like Tuesday, we always do Funday Monday on Tuesday. If you're wondering why, so is everybody else, don't feel bad. Congratulations, you have reached a new personal record. You are now older than you have ever been. And I think you deserve a prize for that. Your prize is nothing. The same prize that people got for beating me in the simultaneous exhibition last episode. So you're sharing in that prize. That's, that's very exciting. Today, the challenge is play a game and invent a new opening. And I mean invent a new opening. You can't just make up H4 because you're like, oh, one H4, I invented it. You did not. That's the anti-Borg. Seriously, that has a name already. I'll oh, just play B4. Sorry, that's the orangutan. These things have names, so you need to be more creative. 9A6, sorry, that's the lemming defense. You can't just be a little creative. You've got to make it up from move one. Okay, maybe you come up with a variation. You know, the Queen's Gambit accepted decline advance variation. That sounds pretty cool. We're not going to have that one today, but yeah, but you get the idea. So we've got a couple of game submissions. Let's get started with one of those right now. Um, click, click, click. I'm working my computer here. Click, click. Click. All right, let's do this. Switch view to the cool view. This cool view is brought to you thanks to ChessWiz. I made it myself. Down there is the as is the broadcast schedule. You know what that is. And up there is the world's coolest logo. And over there, um, that way, is the chessboard. Good thing I pointed that out. Otherwise, you totally miss this awesome opening. Okay, so this isn't exactly an, a new opening. Tell me when you recognize it. Oh, 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 you recognize it already, right? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Have you seen this before? E4, G5? Well, blindchess.org's engine, Stockfish, actually recognized this as the Borg defense, which is why 1H4 is the anti-Borg. It stops G5, which is the Borg. However, <clears throat> it's weak. Uh, and surprise, surprise, because the bishop can just take this pawn, and so it's hard to defend the pawn. Now, you can defend the pawn with a pawn, but it's a little blunderous to do so. Here's what happens. Oh. oh and what it says on my screen is black is checkmated. Now, you can't see that. All you can see is the chessboard, but you can also see the black is checkmated. It's really sad, isn't it? So you have to be careful when you're inventing a new opening. This is called the fool's mate, and I guess it would be the fool's defense. It's the world's fastest checkmate if you're black and you want to get checkmated. Now, if you're white and you want to get checkmated, then you could do it one move faster because you could go g4, f4, and then get mated on the second move instead of the third move. So this shows you what not to do. You have to be careful when you're inventing an opening. Right? Of course right. Of course right. Oh. So let's do some of ChessWiz's favorite openings. Create a game. Let's play a, a two-minute game with one second added. I've learned from the chat there's an opening called, whoops, this is three checks chess. Cancel, 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 cancel. Uh, standard, there we go. I've learned from the chat there's a new opening that I'd never heard of. It's called the Great Crown Attack. And it's named that because the pawns form a great crown. It's so great and it's so crowned. So that's what I'm going to try to play today in this chess game. It's a b3g3 for the double fianchetto. You know what that is, don't you? And then an a4h4 for the double great crown attack. So I got to take white, actually. So cancel my game seek. Let's change this up a little. Let's let anyone play because I had the rating balance kind of kind of tight. And then I got to take white because I wanted to be the great crown attack. Who would play the great crown defense? That's such a bad opening. Here we go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's Shamanix. He's probably going to leave right now. He's one of the guys who signed up for the simul last episode, and then when it came time to play, he was offline. Uh, but he's back now, and he's going to give us some pain. G3. Now, I'm not going to waste any time with the with the actual Fianchetto. I'm just going to go right on out there with my, with my great crown crown. What do you think? What do you think? Is this a good opening? Now, I didn't invent it, I have to admit. This came from, oh, embarrassingly enough, this came from Shamanix himself. He's talking in chat, telling me about this opening, and then he joins my game. He's playing against me in it. That's a little scary. He probably is a great crown expert. It could be. Dun, dun, dun. Hello, chess sucks. 
Welcome to Chess with CD episode 60. So glad you tuned in. We're playing the Great Crown Attack. In case you weren't listening, um, it's this epic pawn structure. It turns out you don't have to control the center in the opening. All you have to do is control the other chess boards. So the ones with the HJ and I files and the ZXCVQW files over here, I'm so controlling them. Wait, it's my turn? That's Fianchetto. This is so powerful. I should probably throw in some knight development. Oh. Well, that's a good idea, Adnorak. He gave me a great idea for the next for the next opening. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a note of it here in my notes program. Typing it in. It's oh, it's my turn again. Oh, you know what they did? They okay, night out. This is good. Uh, they turned down the peace sound. Did you notice that? You notice how quiet it is when they move? Let's see if I can turn that up. Up. Oh. Listen. can hardly hear it. Ooh, you're gonna take my thing? I guarded it with my king! How often does that happen? It's like, oh, my piece is under attack. <laughs> Guess I better protect it with my king. Yep, well, I just did it, thanks to the great crown. Oh, what a dangerous move, Shaman X. You're going the wrong way. Turn around. Recalculating. Recalculating. Look at my position. It is so powerful. I am really controlling that J file very, very well. Okay, so this is a castle's opposite sides position, which means whoever attacks first wins. So let's make sure that's me. Uh oh. Uh, looks like I'm going to attack second. That's not too bad, right? That's the second best possibility. Time is running a little low, but there's a little increment here. I get a new second every move, so I can't run out of time. It's like infinity seconds. 1-1-CM, one, one also known as a line of 11 centimeters, wishes to know what happened to my hair. I'll tell you what happened. I learned about a new weight loss program. It was so effective. Overnight, I lost like two pounds, and I didn't even have to get surgery. Simply a pair of scissors. Quite effective. I highly recommend it. <clears throat> okay, Shaman, you're going to attack? All you did was trade your bishop for a knight. That was a bad trade. Oh, it's closed up. That's not an attack. That's closing. You want to open up the files around the opponent's king? Open the files, not not close them. You're doing it wrong. Okay. So I want to play uh, b4, b5 to open those lines. So I've got to play c3 to support b4 so I can play b5. That's the new plan. Here we go. He's trying to play f5, f4, but look how slow he is. Look how slow. b5 is first. Oh yeah, slow move. Just moving a rook. I'm moving pawns. This pawn pawn storm, as they call it, is going to be pretty powerful. Now, if I take, he takes with pawn. I've got an open file. What about that skewer? That looks pretty good. Let's start with that. He'll probably play c5 to block the skewer, but then I've got that French move. En passant. And that's going to capture his pawn, open up some lines, and I got rook b1, queen b3, queen b8, check, winning a knight. It's pretty powerful. Oh, he just lets me take the exchange? Oh, I didn't expect that. Okay. Okay, I guess I'll do that. You didn't see what I can do now. Double attack on d5. Got two attackers. If you look closely, there's a bishop on it and there's a queen on it. And he only has a queen guarding it, so he might want to play c6, but then my pawn's going to take him in green. That's going to hurt. Oh, I only have 10 seconds. Well, then I'll take over here. f4. Oh, he's closed it up. Open it up. 10 seconds. i got to move really fast now. I should ta capture here, actually. I would offer a queen trade. Since I took the exchange, which is rook for bishop, or rook for knight, while we're on the topic, rook for knight is the exchange, while we're while we're doing that, I should uh, trade, because I'm ahead. When you're ahead, trade queens. Yes. Let's trade here, and then we can trade rooks, and then we can just trade trades. My trade will trade with your trade, and it's totally tradable. Ooh. This looks cool. If he takes my bishop, I take his knight, and then make a new bride. Looking forward. Looking forward to that one. Check. Ooh. Hey guys, look, I can play chess while drinking. Hmm. That's some good water. Hmm. Oh, is your knight trapped? Oh, your knight took my knight. My knight. Ah, ooh, ah, mm. Okay. I guess I should advance here and then make a queen. Yeah. That's a good plan. Oh, out of time. Time plus time. Oh, oh, I was too slow. I tried to give him time. Oh, sorry, guys. I should have had this view on. I am so sorry. You couldn't see the time at all. <laughs> Lol at you. I could see him running out of time. And you guys were like, well, there's a chessboard. Uh. 
Too bad. You couldn't see that he was running out of time. I tried to add him time, and then I realized that I was too slow for that, and he just ran out of time. But look how winning I am. I mean, he has two knights, and I have zero. But let's not look at the knights. Let's look at the rooks. I've got double, double the quantity of rooks. Now let's look at who's about to queen a pawn. You can tell who's about to win if you look there. What's up in this corner? Oh, wow. Look how invisible I am. Edit scene. Hey. Oh, ah, help, help. I'm drowning. What happened to my views? All shrank. Let's work on this. There we go. Sorry, all you got to see was the corner of my room for a while. I don't think this is much improved. Yeah, much better. Wow. <laughs> nice webcam view. What, your opponent is dumb? I think my opponent's opponent is dumb. That's what I think. Trout wants to play, but I can't. Yo, King of the Hill Mesta, says Trout. Hey, Trout, what's up? I gotta play a crazy opening, so. So let's do that right now. He challenged me to a one minute rated game. Yes! Okay, so that was the crown attack. Let's do that one more time, the royal crown. Join game. We'll try the royal crown defense to see how it goes. The royal crown attack was strong, but he castled on the queen side. So it allowed me to just roll my pawns into his face. Is that gonna go so well as black? Let's find out. Does Trout know what I'm doing? Okay, knight's next. This is working great. Look at this royal crown attack. It is royally awesome. I think he should take this with his bishop. Think he's gonna sacrifice there? I bet he will. Oh. Ah! Ah! So boring. I'm so extremely bored. Oh, it's a one minute game. I guess I better play quick. Lee. Oh, c4. Attack that center. Oh, let's trade. Let's trade. Oh, nice knight. It's a powerful knight. I'm taking you. Ah! Better not take that with my queen. Okay, how's the royal, the royal crown attack working for us today? It seems royally inferior. Ah. I can see he's coming to checkmate, so let's stop him that way. Hi, bye. Yeah, he was he was really looking to just checkmate me. He thought that would be a great joke on me, but it wasn't because I stabbed him. Hmm. Even position, but something about my pawn seems worse. I think it's all the doubledness. No, don't force me away. I'm I'm sad about that. Okay. These two pawns are really scary. <clears throat> bad, bad news. Bad news. Oh good. Bad news for him now. Yes. Um, check, and I gotta get back here. Gotta get back. I'll see you. Okay, who has more pawns now? I think it's me. Uh oh. Uh oh. Four seconds. No. No. Ha. Oh, time! Stop! Ah, Trout, you outsmarted me. You outmoused me. You out chess whizzed me. I can't believe it. It was 10 seconds to four, right? So that's when chess whiz mode kicks in, and it's like, okay, so I need to make 40 moves in no time while he uses his 10 seconds. Well, he used eight of his seconds. Meanwhile, I used all of my seconds. Oh, wait. Oh, did it wrong. I did it wrong. All rook endings are drawn except when there's a clock on the board, and this clock was a problem. So X-Ray Licks would like a shout out. Uh, thank you, Trout. Um, I would like to, I would like to um, play a new opening now. I need a slower time control. Abort. I'm sorry, Trout, but let's match you with the slower time control because I have to learn from these new openings we're inventing. So let's do two minutes and one, one second at it, okay? Let's do that, Trout. Then we'll see who's a fish out of water. Uh, get it, get it. Okay, so the question is, in chat, X-Ray LX, also known as the Deluxe X-Ray, says, after you give me a shout out, I got a question for you. Huh, maybe that means if I never give him a shout out, he'll never have a question for me. Ah, that'd be too bad. Shout out to X-Ray LX! Okay, you got your shout out, and I want your question. Okay, so the next opening that we're gonna try is called The Stable. Um, it is 
d4, knight d2. So the knight comes in like this, knight right like this after, after d4. Oh, green arrows, that's very beautiful. And e4, knight e2. Now it's going to be challenging because those d and e pawns might encounter some resistance in the center. But let's just ignore that for now and focus on the stable move. We'll focus on the knight d2 and the knight e2 because those positions for the knights are so worse. But we'll try it. We'll see how it goes. Knight e2. Next, d4. <clears throat> should I play d3? That would be so timid. I should probably focus on the true stable, which would be d4. The problem is he would just take me uh, or, or take this one. But I am a champion, so I will play d4 anyway. Ooh, Shockfall is spamming me. Decline you. Decline you. You got just double declined right there, Shockfall. So you think you got a free pawn. Well, you know what? I got news for you. You're right. You did get a free pawn. But I played the stable. I don't see you playing the stable. Okay, so let's see how the stable goes. It looks like it's got a weakness. It, it seems to weaken the e4 pawn. X-Ray LX is ready for his question. He's ready to bring out the question. Oh, look, a free pawn. You lost your e-pawn. Well, we both lost our e-pawns, but let's count e-pawns. I got infinity times more e-pawns than you. So, seems like I'm winning. Seems like that to me. So the question from X-Ray Alex, now that you got a shout out, is... Okay, defend that pawn. The question is, why is it called Funday Monday when you stream on Tuesday? Oh, that's a very legitimate question. Uh, ready for the legitimate answer. Can you believe it? Chess was actually going to answer one of the questions that people ask on stream. Usually, usually the way it goes is like this. Someone answers a question. Sorry, yeah, let's start over. Someone asks a question. That's step one. And then step two is Chess Wiz notices the question and he probably reads it out loud. That's two. That's step two. Then step three, Chess Wiz ignores the question and tells a story about chess or about, you know, rabbits, whatever the story might be about. It, it, it changes over time, okay? Then I pin a, pin a knight. Then step four is another question is asked. You just go through this loop and you never get any answers. That's because I'm the son of my father who does that to me all the time. If you ask him a question, you better be ready to hear about yesterday because he'll tell you whether or not that's part of the answer. So it's really too bad that that story has now lost me this bishop um, right here because it's a discovered attack while well, I lost this pawn and now even I take back, I'm going to lose my bishop and the rook is not going to help. Oh, this is too bad. And I don't like green, so let's change it to red. There we go. See how my bishop's under attack? It's bad. So I'm down a pawn. That's so sad. At least I'll, at least I'll, I st it's still my turn. At least it's my turn. That's something. Uh, yeah, I'm just, just worse here. 100% worse. Okay, so, so back to the question. Since I'm a gentleman today, I, I'm just answering the question. You know, the question is, it's it's Tuesday, so why is the episode called Fun Day Monday? Well, Fun Day rhymes with Monday, so obviously you want to have it on. You don't. You're not gonna have Fun Day Tuesday. That doesn't make any sense. And Chess with TV makes sense, so it's got to be called Fun Day Monday. So step two is when do you have Fun Day Monday? Okay, here are your choices. Here are your choices: Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday. Okay, now is it making sense? Which of those three days would you like to have Fun Day Monday on? Now, not Saturday, because Saturday we reserve for super epic episodes um, because it's a weekend. We have to do awesome things, so it can't be Saturday. So that narrows it down to Tuesday and Thursday. Um, um, and, and, and I'm running out of time while I'm down a pawn. It's really sad. But if I play A4 and then A5, his knight moves, and then I take the B pawn. Yes, that's the new plan. Okay, Trout. <clears throat> so between Tuesday and Thursday, I just measured a proximity, and I noticed that Thursday was three times further away than Monday, uh, to Monday, than Tuesday. I hope you're following. That's why I chose... That's why I chose... Um, I lost my train of thought. However, it's called Funny Monday for a good reason. There's a very famous man named Sean Day9. Oh, I'm going to get back right mated. Plot. And I'm sure you've heard of him because he's so awesome. What am I going to do? I don't want to get back right mated. I bet he can mate me still. Or fork off my queen. Um, ouch. Ouch, Trout. Ouch. Oh, he's giving me time so I can die slowly. He's like, oh, I see you don't have a queen. Here's some time for your clock so you can feel the pain a little longer. I liked having eight seconds left. Then I knew I would only hurt for eight seconds. Uh, now it's not so clear how long I'll be hurting for. But this white flag might be of some assistance. Click. 
Oh, thank you, White Flag. The pain is over. Let's look at someone else's bad chest now. Um, let's look specifically at an opening called. Oh, let's get back to the let's get back to the answer. So this famous man named Day Nine, Sean Day Nine Plot, is a famous StarCraft II guy who does exactly what I do, except he's awesomer. Um, and so he came up with the idea. He was like, I'll do Funday Monday, and Funday Monday is so awesome on Day Nine's channel. So I was like, well, I should be as cool as him, so I'll take his idea. So I actually wrote him a message. Where I was like, dear Day Nine, sir, may I please take your idea uh, lovingly, Chess Whiz? And he didn't reply because he's too awesome to reply to me. Look, do I look awesome? Yeah, but does he look? He's like 100% more awesome. It's like, it's like Chess Whiz awesome and then him. So he didn't send me a message back. So I assumed, well, he didn't say no. So I took his idea. That's why it's called Monday Monday. And we do it on Tuesday because we don't cast Monday. Why not? Because Mondays are horrible. But you probably would like to see an opening called the Monday Defense. This one right here. This game played by a, a Chester's TV viewer who goes by Todovsky. Because he's Russian. Because he's running out of time. That's why he's Russian. Eh, get it. <clears throat> He's using an opening called the Monday Defense, which is a which is a um, new opening. You can see e5 here is designed to protect the pawn with his bishop. Very clever, very clever. So that you start with f5 and then you move e5. So you notice an interesting pawn structure here. Really covers this square really well. This one right here that I'm drawing bubbles on. Ooh, this looks like I opened MS Paint because in MS Paint the only cool thing you can do is draw red circles. So this is a great control of e4, but watch what happens to the pawn structure. Yes, this is called a grip on the white square. It's also called stupid because you're creating a lot of holes in here. g5 is a bad hole. Look how the computer recommends e5 to have pawns in a line. That's better than pawns with holes. This is starting to look like Swiss cheese, but it's the Monday fence. So watch closely. Watch what happens. Do you think we're going to trade pawns? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Monday, anything goes. Look at this pawn structure from black. It's almost symmetrical. It's like it's got that beauty of asymmetry there. So pretty. So pretty. E6, G6. Save the queen. C6. What do you think the next move is? What do you think? You think it's going to be A6? What do you want to bet? <clears throat> Trying to put your bets down. Are you ready? Who's betting for a6? Okay. Okay, you got your bets in. Who's betting for a5? <laughs> oh, sorry. You all lost your money. It was a5. Oh, why? It's not on a white square. That's because a4 is even awesomer. So take a look at this pawn structure, every pawn on white. This is such a good grip of the white squares. This defense is called the Monday defense. Control the white squares. Um, and it has a weakness, and that weakness is, is called the black squares. Uh, but it has a strength, and, and that strength, it's called the white square. So let's see what happens in this game anyway. Not much. As you can see, white's about to get checkmated. He's hardly brought anything off the back rank. Look, he's only he's, his rooks are still on the back rank, whereas black, look how he's developed his bishop. He's poised to attack. This this move right here, developing the bishop, wow, his army is ready to go. So at this point, you got to say Black's probably going to win because he's brought his army out so well. Oh, oh, knight of six. Oh, rook g8. Oh, bring the queen up. Oh, queen again. I like that two moves in a row. Watch this. Let's watch this in slow motion. Queen to b6. Oop, not far enough. Queen to b6. Took two moves, but he got there. It's worth something. And bringing in the rest of the army. Knight f8, I love that. Cap, couple of captures, capture, 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 capture. Looks like the king side's opening up. Oh, I love that castling technique. You know you can castle king side or queen side, or you can just try to castle in your mouse button. He has a little dirt in it, and then oops, you let go of the king too early, and then it's king d8 instead. He actually meant to do this because he wanted to keep guarding his bishop with the king. But it's kind of like you're leaving your king in the center. I don't know. I don't know. And a lot of the point to castling, actually, guys, let me just help you out here, is to get this, no, is to get this rook and this rook communicating on the same line like this. Look at that. Look how descriptive my arrows are, extremely descriptive. So you want those rooks to be able to communicate, be able to reach each other and say, how are you doing today? I'm a rook. Wow, I'm sorry to hear that. 
But here the king cannot go to c7 because the bishop's guarding it. So it can't get off the back rank, so the rooks can't connect. This is kind of inferior for black. Kind of inferior. Oop, doubling up those rooks. Good. Strike back. Bishop out. Bishop check. King up. Good. Now we get those rooks connected. What's going to happen? I don't know. It's going too quick to see. Um, queen f6. Inaccuracy. Oh, black's first inaccuracy this game, I think. I think. Ooh, rook in check. King up. I love it. I love it. All the pieces are really mobilizing now. I love that king side control. Look at these black pieces right here. All of them right on the king side. Just focus down on absolutely nothing because um, it's because white's on the other side of the board. I love it. And the king all by himself over here. This is great work. Of course, he's about to get skewered. Uh, rook a6 check is going gonna, is gonna to win the queen. But hey. Oh, he got the queen out of the way. Very good. Oh, lost a rook. This could be bad now. Starting to think, oh, oh, black is checkmate. I'm starting to think that's inferior. Okay, so don't use the Monday defense. Thank you, Todowski, for showing us what not to do. But I'm going to try that right now. I'm going to try that. Let's go to um, let's go to Shockful's game here. You ready, Shockful? You've been very patient. Let's see. Oh, he's got the three green antenna, but I don't think he's here. Shockful, come on over. We're going to play. I hope you can hear me. FL stands for Florida. Um, because he's from Germany, and Florida is right next to Germany. If you look at a map, they're like the same shape. Florida curves down, and Germany sits there. It's like it's like the same. Here he is. Very good. And the shock is German. It means chess. Of course. Everything means chess in German. Uh, okay, so what am I doing? Oh, yes, the Monday defense. So this is going to be difficult. I need to get everything off white. Um... We'll start with c6. Uh oh, losing happens wants to play, but then losing might happen, so I'll just leave that open over there. c6. Oh, what a slow game! Shuffle, come on. Okay, white squares, white squares. Focus on the white. Focus on the white. Very good. Okay, I don't want to play d5 too soon because that would distract me from my real goal here. I mean, if I play d5, he might take my pawn. That would be rude. And lead to. Oh, I can play this just like the other guy, just like Todowski. Bishop e7. I saw he threw that in. So this is pretty much the Monday defense. Perfecto. I'm loving it. Hold on a sec. Did you hear any of that? I got this button right on my mic. Can't hear me when I press it. It's pretty awesome. Sometimes it's pressed and I don't notice and that's that's not so good. Okay, let's finish up those white squares here. I noticed, Shockful, that you lost your bishop. I could take that, and then you took back again. You again with my queen? But <clears throat> but I'm busy. I'm still playing the Monday defense. And, uh, oh, yeah, very good. It's saving me time. Yes, Monday defense complete! I have now gotten every pawn on white square. So you guys can try this opening at home. It is so potent. It just has one weakness. Okay, it has a couple of weaknesses. However, yeah. Yeah, it's actually really bad, so so never mind. But but it's fun, I'm having fun, having fun. Okay, so now what do we do that now that I've moved his pawns and my queen? What's step two again? Well, I guess I'll bring out my pieces, right? That's always a good idea in the opening. <clears throat> this is uh, the button that I have here is not on my computer actually. Oh, are you are you winning my my knight? I move away and you win my knight. Hmm? Queen h4, g3, queen moves. Let's try that. You can't chase me away now. Look at this microphone. Oh, wow, it's enormous. It's huge. The mute button is on the mic because it's like the world's fanciest mic. That is why I have a mute button there. The microphone is called the Blue Yeti. And it's a very fancy one. That's why it sounds so good right now. I mean, I don't sound this good in real life. In real life, I walk up and I'm like, hi, and they're like, oh, not another nerd. But over the internet, I can totally disguise that with this microphone. They don't even know how nerdy I am. It's, it's, it's excellent. Excellent. Yes, okay. Anything important in the chat here? Let's take a look. Someone's pointing me toward a game of chess. And there's another game of chess. Well, that's good, because we're on a chess channel. We're doing chess things today. Let's take a quick peek at this chess while I just... I just make sure I get my pieces out here. Where's this knight gonna go? This is the downside of the Monday defense. Oh, I was supposed to play a5, a4. 
oh yeah, you were showing me how to do this, man, and I just totally bungled it. I should have played a5. Really? Should I go back here? Is that safe? I think here is probably better. Yeah, knights on the rim are brilliant. That's the saying, right? Go here. I'm gonna play a five, a four. I mean, I mean a four, and then, and then I'm like, oh, my queen will be trapped, won't it? No, nope. it'll be okay. I guess maybe I'll go here. Yeah, why not? It's a better spot. Okay. Oh, this looks like the happy face defense over here on my other screen. Should definitely, definitely share that one. So this is such a boring slow chess game because we each got three minutes. Can't believe you guys are still tuned in. Is there anyone tuned in? Maybe no one's watching. Let's click this button. Oh good, there's still two people watching. Excellent. Hi guys. I'm only joking there's at least three people watching, but but I like to joke. I mean I mean that's a last free country. I can joke if I want to. What about this knight move? Oh shockful, my piece are starting to get out. Look at this bishop a6, and then my bishop's gonna be outside the pawn structure, which is important. Because when you've got every pawn on white squares, your white square bishop had better have a good idea of what it's about to do. So out there's the plan. I know what to do, I'll castle this way. It'll be so cool. <clears throat> One of us is going to die because his king is in this part of the board over here and my king is in this part of the board over here. They're not in the same part. They're different parts. So one of us is going to get checkmated. I'm just hoping it's him. We should flip a coin and see who it's going to be. Yeah, I'm not scared of you. Bishop A6, I'm going to follow your advice. SRXX A77, which is so easy to say. I'm going to say it right now. SRX A7. Whoops, I got it wrong. XX. Whoops. Oh, let me try again. SRXX A77. You got a great name if you like not being able to say it ever. Maybe it's just pronounced. In that case, I'm sorry. You probably should have checked your keyboard before you typed that because your hands were off by one position. So when you type, try to type high, you just type no. That happens to me all the time because my keyboard layout, if your hand is off by one, yeah. I'm typing no all the people all the time. All the people see hi, no. Okay, so someone says hi to me and I'm like, no. It happens a lot because of my keyboard layout. Weird, weird. Okay, should we trade queens or should I just run out of time? Uh, okay, trade queens, I guess. I have already eight seconds left. I get a new second every move, so I still have infinity time, which is a long time. See, look, 10 seconds now. Up from eight. <clears throat> I am about to get checkmated, that's too bad. It's really sad. Oh, he's letting me out, thank you. Uh-oh, oh, you let me out, thank you. Oh, I got away. Okay, so there's some danger here. Fortunately, I'm not aware of it, so. Um, so if you don't know there's a problem, it's kind of like there not being a problem, it's very similar. Almost as if there's not a problem. I'm gonna check you, watch out. Oh, your knight's under attack, poor guy. Poor guy's knight's under attack. Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm. Shackle's gonna run out of time wondering what to do. Didn't work. Oh no! I had you, chef. I had you. And then I flagged in on my knight is pinned, and I can't escape. But look at this. Replay and analyze. Let's analyze this position right here. Okay. Instead of rook b4, if I had a few more brain cells, I would have played. Um. I would have made this sound, and then you would have just resigned. Isn't there anything more awesome? That's pathetic. Just pathetic. Let's play the uh, the happy face opening. Let's do that right now. Yo, trout. Um, ready for the happy face opening? Here we go. Copy. Copy. Paste. And cool view. Ready for the happy face? Now you might wonder, why is it called the happy face opening? Because it makes a happy face. Happy. 
look closely at the pawns, it's it's actually smiling. Now the interesting thing about this game is that it was played by me and I didn't even know it. Look over here. Shockful versus Chess Whiz, 180, 180. You guys remember this? About eight episodes ago, we played a game that went longer than the episode. Because 180 minutes is three hours longer than an episode. So the game went like this. This was a great game. You guys remember this? G6, and he did not he did not move his queen. I love this game. Thank you, Shockful, for, for bringing that up. Um, so the happy face opening is kind of weak uh, because you're not controlling the center very well. So let's not let's not play the happy face every game. Let's look at an opening called the student body right. Whoa! No, not you. Look how look how bamboozled my view is. There we go. Now we're back to chess. Let's drag that off. Move that over there. There. Now we're back to back to the way it should be. Um, Never mind that, there was a little bit of technical difficulty. The student body right, it turns out, is um, the name of a football strategy. Um, because when football is being played by students, then the student body is every player. And so student body right would be sending every player to the right. Now that doesn't go so well in chess, but that doesn't mean we can't do it. Ready? H4, G4. This is move all chess pieces to the right opening and it's called the student body right opening it turns out you should not try this at home uh, because it's impossible your king is over there and your pieces aren't so when you move your yeah watch what happens i think black should just move his d pawn so that he can discover attack this bishop like this discovered attack uh, but he doesn't and now e4 <clears throat> so everything's going to the right that part looks good but unfortunately um, he's dropped his pawn now. G4 is just going to get captured. So now, not so good. So let's see what happens to White's king side in just a few moves. Oh, let's let's take that in slow motion. Capture, 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 capture. Oh, nice sacrifice, knight for pawn when you could have taken knight. Okay, so there's not much left on the king side. It's pretty much just a king. And then take the knight. So who's ahead? Well, let's count the pawns. Black's got two extra pawns. Now let's count the pieces. White's got an extra piece. Awesome. White just won a piece with the student body right. Now there is a downside. Like the king is totally exposed and black played horribly. But hey, you could try this at home. You could go you could go e, h4, g4 for your first two moves. And then you could say, why did I do this? I'm never watching chess with TV again. Um, let's watch the rest of the game real quick. <clears throat> it's kind of pathetic, isn't it? Oh, white's still ahead of piece. I guess he'll win eventually. That's a lot of black pawns, though. Yeah, white should still win with his knight. Oh, it looks good for white. Yeah, this is very good for white. Oh, and black resigns. Good game. Good game. Okay, losing happens. Wants to play a three-minute casual game. That's fine with me. Fine with me. But we've got to try a new opening. Hmm. Let's try the student body right, guys. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's try it. I'm sure this is going to work great. E4, F4. Now we got to move everything to the right. So E4 would be an overextension. We have to play carefully. We have to move everything to the right. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I lost my pawn. This happens to everyone who plays this opening, you know, because that pawn's not very guarded at all. Let's trade bishops, then I will be sure not to castle on the right. I'll be sure of it. Come on. Let's go. Oh, sorry, guys. It's the wrong view. There you go. Now you can see the time, the clocks, the cool chess pieces, everything up there. That's so awesome. Number one. Yeah. Sorry about the wrong view for you. Sorry. Sorry about that. How do I get the rest of my pieces to the right? Let's get the queen going over there. Okay, you didn't hear that. If you think you heard that, it was a mirage. It was an illusion. It was a thing you didn't hear. So if you believe you heard it, you should just start believing you didn't hear it right now. How do I get the bishop to the right? Now that's a good question. It's going to be hard. I guess I'll just move it one space. Castle, queen side, and then e4. This will work. This will work. Wow, I'm getting bombarded by... Bombarded by a bunch of noobs. This time it's Ragritz trying to play me. What a noob, Ragritz. I can't believe you played queen b4 during the simul and just trapped my queen. 
I just can't believe that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, well, that's because you didn't pay any attention last episode. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I finished student body right. Now what happens? Got to get my other knight over there maybe. Are you going to castle queenside? That'd be pretty cool since you're ahead of pawn. E4. Let's open that center. You're still in the center. Losing happens. You're still in the center. So I'd like to see losing happen. You'll probably play d4 and close it up. But then I'll play knight, e, knight d5. This knight move right here. Into that hole. That'll be fun. <clears throat> Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's play some real chess here. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about what I had for breakfast. You're not going to believe this, but I had cheese for breakfast. In honor of Cheese Whiz. Cheese Whiz, if you're watching right now, you're my greatest fan. Why not just A3, right? I mean, why would I not even just play A3? A3, D4, take, take, take. Ah, you don't want to do that. How about take here? Knight takes back. Take, take. I don't, I don't want a piece that way. And pretty soon... Yeah, take this way. Knight takes, then knight, knight four. Maybe I should capture this way. Yeah, 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 yeah. What if I just push? I mean, what if I? What are you even doing? Losing happens. Yeah, really. You you saw all this, but what about this pawn over here? Did you did you calculate all the way to that? Did you see that? Because I did. In my head, I saw those moves. In my head. Oh, please don't play b three right now. I don't want you to play b three. That would hurt. That would open up my king. Please don't. Ooh, so it's very concerning over here on the, on the queen side, on the westward area of the board. The best thing to do if you're under attack on the side of the board is to strike back in the center. So that's why I've played d4. By opening the center up, he'll be too distracted to attack me on the queen side, and it will open up my rook for defense. This rook h3, absolutely brilliant move, is now able to come over here on the queen side and help defend. Brilliant. Okay, so queen b5 check. Look what he has to do. He can't block that. It's pretty harsh. It's pretty harsh. Check it out. Get it? Check it out. <laughs> yeah, he can either be royally forked or miniaturely forked, and I think he chose the small one. I wonder if there was anything more awesome I could do instead of that. I mean, I only, only won the exchange. That's all I got. Why did he take my rook back with his rook? It's weird that he didn't. My knight escapes. Wow, I'm ahead of a whole rook now. Fantastico. I'm so glad losing happens that you're letting me win on stream. So appreciate. Very pleased. Hmm. 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 Seems like I have the advantage. Two rooks against a bishop. I checked. Oops, oops, there's one of my rooks gone. Good thing I have an extra rook just in case he takes one of them. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I read it in a book. I was like, oh, chapter four, two rooks is better than a bishop. Great. Keep that in mind. Losing happens. Why are you playing so slowly? Why didn't you move in with your king? Now I can just make another queen. Hmm, something suspicious about this game. Hmm, let's give him some time. I want you to die slower, losing happens. Oh, he resigns. Yes, I won a game on TV. I feel awesome. There are some other good things about my life, but right now the best thing is that I just beat lo lo losing happens on TV. I feel great. Okay, so it turns out the student body right opening can be a good opening um, if his center falls apart, which is what happened that game. So it, it can be good. Okay, what do you guys want to do with the last 10 minutes of the stream? There's a couple of things we could do. We could look at more crazy openings. Um, actually, that's all we can do is invent more openings because it's Funday Monday and that's the challenge. 
So is there any openings we haven't looked at yet that we should look at? Well, there's one called the Benko Deferred, but that just sounds boring because the Benko Gambit is already like this positional gambit where nothing happens except a slow grind. So you try deferring that and it doesn't sound like it gets any more exciting. So who would want to look at that game? The next option we have is, uh, I'm looking at my list of things here. We do have an A4 Rook A3 game where someone thought he should develop his Rook on the first move. You know, we've seen people do that, but they weren't real smart, so I don't know if we want to waste our time learning from that noob. Then there's the humiliation defense. Of course, there is the humiliation defense. What about that? Let's, let's take a look at what the humiliation defense is. e4, knight a6. Okay, that's the lemming defense. Knight f3, knight a6. Two lemmings going off of separate cliffs on opposite sides of the board. AKA Humiliation, named by HB2007, who's sometimes 2007. I think he just fat fingers the zero over and over and is not sure what year he's in, but right now he's four years ago. Five years ago, wow, I'm getting old. Okay, so Humiliation, is this gonna work? Oh, look at that, plus the Fianchetto, I love that. You don't have to fight in the center when you can just go sideways instead. Mmm, move a knight four times, very good. Okay, so I actually kinda like Black's position better because he's brought out three pieces, his knight, his bishop, his knight, and his castle, so that's like four useful moves, whereas white has two. I mean, bishop and knight are all, I mean, they both move to center pawn, but that's about balance, so. What, why aren't you bringing out your pieces? Look at this orange squares right here, look at this. See the orange? What's where's my square mode? Right there. See those squares? It says you should move here. Green arrow this way, because then it would cause a blue check to the king. You should have done that. You should have done it. Check. Oh, with the queen? Come on, you should check with the rook, because then he doesn't want to block with his queen. You would trade your rook for his queen. It's a good trade. It's a good trade. Oh, nice fork. Guys, did you see that? Uh-oh, knight e2 is threatened. Guess I better move that pawn out of the way, so that when he forks me and wins a rook, he doesn't get that pawn. Oh, good work. You saved your pawn. Good, good, good. Do, 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 do. Look at some first-rate chess right here. Oh, white resign. Good call. Don't want to have any more pain. I like how the bishop c1 was just captured on its home square. It's like, I'm feeling concerned, so I will never move. Uh-oh. Someone's knocking on my front door. Uh-oh. They just opened my front door. Uh-oh. They, they're in the bed. Uh-oh. They just shot me in the face in my own bed, and I'm the bishop c1. That's kind of sad. Kind of sad ending for this chess game. And I like how white made the final move and then resigned on his opponent's turn. That's generally considered not very polite. If you're going to resign, you should at least do it on your own turn. Not while your opponent is like, hmm, hmm, I resign. On his turn, it interrupts his flow of thought. What if he was coming up with a great move and you interrupted him? Okay, so we've got challenges from Ragritz. Let's go to the other view. And Shuffle. Here, let me hide the logo so you can see all this. Ragritz wants to play. Shuffle wants to play. Last but not least, cheese whiz. Okay, so a commenter said, I think cheese whiz is actually Thibaut, the creator of the website, and he's trolling me. That's possible, actually, because I messaged Thibaut about him, and I was like, Thibaut, aren't you going to ban this guy to the moon? Because he's on my stream, and he's trolling me. And then Thibaut was like, um... Uh, what did he do? He actually wanted to know what he did. Well, he named himself Cheese Whiz. Is that not enough of an offense for you to dig a hole in the ground, put him inside, and cover it up? I mean, come on. Okay, I'll play you, Cheese Whiz. And he hasn't banned him yet. As you can see, he's alive and kicking right here. Okay, Cheese Whiz, who are you? In my opinion, this guy is actually one of the viewers. So I need your help to determine who it is. If you're not Cheese Whiz, then why don't you say in chat, it's not me. And if you are Cheese Whiz, you should say, it is me. That way we can figure it out, because I need your help. I can't figure out who this guy is, although he's pretty awesome, because look how fast he can play chess. Look how fast these moves are going. This is flying across the screen. Just flying. Oh, your queen's under attack. See, F3, I don't like that move. That's where the last game with, with cheese was went also. He was all, he was all pawn, 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 pawn. On the king side, it's got a bad habit about that. Okay, we know what this is not. This is not stickers, guys, because look, I love stickers is watching the game. How could he watch his own game so well? He's not doing it, so this is someone else. At first I thought for sure it was Stickers because he's a real troll, but it wasn't him. E4 to open it up. Is it a good idea? I don't know. Seems to be working. This is an interesting position. Uh, I think I'll be taking, I think I'll be taking E3 and pinning you and forking you at the same time. 
Seems powerful. A pin and a fork at the same time. <clears throat> oh dear. There went your queen cheese whiz. Glad I'm not you. I am almost you. We're just separate by a couple of letters. But there's a key difference, and that is I'm not you, and I'm so glad. Huh. I'm winning. That's because I'm I'm the real chess whiz. <coughs> You're the cheese. <coughs> That's the difference. Hey, I need that pawn. I was gonna push it. What about this check right here? Whoa, not right now. Now, nope, take this. Check. And then here. Okay, looking. Oh, how dare you guard your stuff? I'm taking it. Okay, knight in. You like that pin? I do. He's gonna have to take here now. Oh, he's, he's taking there. Get out. I have eight seconds. So I have to play a little fast. Seven seconds. Oh, bad luck. Bad luck. Gotcha. Hmm. Got a checkmate here. Three seconds. One second. Oh, 1.2 seconds. The chess whiz take the victory from cheese whiz. Okay, I don't know if I can waste any more time playing you, man. I mean, it's like, I don't even know what I'm doing. My life is wasting away while I just checkmate you over and over and over. I don't know. Okay, so Shamanic says it's not him. Ola says it's not him. Sticker says it's not him. Mimi um, says, what's the best Silman book in your opinion? I really like Reassess Your Chess, but it must be you because you didn't say it wasn't you. One Nate, Two Nate says maybe. But he's not talking about whether it's him or not. Then he says lol. I love it when you guys say lol because then I know that I'm on the right track. Hmm. <clears throat> Cheese Whiz says happy. Look at how he does his smiley. He doesn't like this. <clears throat> we need to dedicate the rest of the episode to figure out who this guy is. Who is he? Let's play the Monday attack. Guys, remember the Monday defense? What about it with white? It's probably even better. White squares with white. Hmm. Oh! I guess there's a downside. Do you think Cheese Whiz can beat me? If Cheese Whiz can beat me when he's ahead of Rook, that'll be a clue. That means he's not a totally horrible player. However, I might still beat him because I'm pretty epic. So we're going to find out. I'm gonna, this is going to be a test of Cheese Whiz ability right here. See if he can win ahead of Rook. He can't. He just castled Queen side, so he's doomed. Because I'm on the king side, it's time for some check baits. It's a good square right there. Wow, this guy's pretty good. Look at that knight. Ooh, queen coming in. Wow, this guy's powerful. Ooh, he's just taking stuff left and right. He's like a grand capture. And now he's going to checkmate me? Wow, you're great. You're great, cheese whiz. Can you win though? I mean, you gotta win. You can't just you can't just be awesome without winning. It's not it's not sufficient. It's not it's not enough. Down rook at the end, that's not so good. Probably because I was down rook at the beginning. Oh, that's a checkmate. Okay, so Cheese Whiz is good enough to beat me when he picks up a rook in the opening. That's a clue. That actually wipes out about half of the light chess viewership. Um, everyone 1400 and down would have lost, even ahead of rook. So that, that helps. Good, he's done beating me. Look at that. Kingside Crusher. <gasps> That's a clue. That's a clue right there. That's a clue. Look. Scrolly, scroll, 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 scrolly, scroll, scroll. Wait. That's high as it scrolls? 
I had to close my chat. Guys, scroll up. Everyone who is viewing at the beginning of the episode, scroll up to the top of your chat. Somebody said Kingside Crusher, and that's probably the real Cheese Whiz. So I need you to control F, uh, which is this, control F, and that pulls up a find if you're in Chrome. If you're in other browsers, it also pulls up a find. Then you type Crusher like this. Crusher. Oh, it was one Nate, two Nate. Hmm. Notice this Kingside Crusher statement that he made out of the blue. If you look, scroll up a little bit, it's just out of the blue. And then over here, he's like, Kingside Crusher. I think I'm putting two and two, one and two to get two and one. I'm putting two and two together here. It's taking a little while, but I think I figured it out. Kingside Crusher. Is he one Nate, two Nate? Could he be? Because I already know about him. He goes by losing happens also. Take a look at this guy's ratings now. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem right. Let's play Trout, guys. Let's not get bored. Let's play a game. This is the last game of the episode. Thank you for tuning in. As you know, we broadcast Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 3 p.m. GMT, which is 8 in the morning on the Pacific coast of the United States early. So sorry if you're having to get up really early to watch Tesla's TV. At least you can feel good that I have to get up early to broadcast Tesla's TV because that's the time zone I'm in. Are you really doing this little forky gig? can't believe you would do that. Is this the final get chess game of the day, of the night, of whatever you are, wherever you are? Thanks for the queen trout. I appreciate. Next episode, I don't know what we're going to do, but it's going to be great. I can't wait. I can't wait. The episode after that, oh yeah, more awesome, more the same. Oh yeah, you guys get another challenge, don't you? You do get a challenge. The account is closed. It's very suspicious. Very suspicious. Guys in chat are still wondering about the cheese whiz, wondering who he is. And I'm wondering too, but my next guess is 1892. Now I'm going to have to talk with him because I actually just had a message from him because um, he has another account. It's Losing Happens. Losing Happens is 1828. So, so if, if that's all the same guy, then, then we can use IP analysis, which stands for IP, in order to figure out if that's really him. Check. I'll just fly down here with the knight. I love having an extra queen. It really makes chess a lot easier. Thanks for the rook. And Trout resigns. Thank you for tuning in, guys. So here's the challenge for next episode. Don't close the browser yet. You gotta hear the challenge. Here's the challenge for the next Monday, Monday, which is a week from today. You know how... Okay, so there's a chess variant that's not on light chess. This is out of the blue. We haven't been talking about this at all. So tune up your ears. I made that one up. You simply need to... Okay, here it comes. There's a variant called Extinction Chess. Perhaps a few of you have heard of it. You treat each of your pieces like its own species. Like the knights, you can think of them as these rare horses. You only have two. And the bishops, you can think of them as, as bishops. And you only have two of them. Your goal is to not let anything go extinct. So you, if you lose a knight, you must not lose the other knight. It's like getting checkmated. If you lose a bishop, you may not lose the other bishop. Same goes for the pawns. If you happen to lose seven of your pawns, you must be very careful not to lose the eighth pawn. That one's less concerning. Same with your queen. Don't lose your queen or you lose instantly. So you need to play a game of chess with Extinction Chess in mind. The fun thing is if you can find another guy who wants to play Extinction Chess and he just agrees that if he loses if he loses a class of piece or a species, so to speak, then he'll just resign. So try that out. But even if you're not playing someone like that, you need to play as if you are playing Extinction Chess. So I want to see the weirdest games that you've got where you're trying to preserve your species and see how far you can get. See if you can even win a game without losing any species of chess piece. Good luck with that. I look forward to your games. This has been Chess TV. Thanks for watching.